In the last episode, I showed how I started to build my new garden bed. I did however end with a mistake. I had installed this top architrave piece upside down. I had intended to have the curved scroll detail be on the top side and for some odd reason I installed it reversed. But this will make more sense as you see the rest of the design coming together. Especially the roof like structure I will add. Making mistakes along the way is part of the process, especially when you are brainstorming and coming up with the design on the spot. Since I was using screws to fasten the elements, correcting this mistake was easy enough. What was a bit harder was to get things aligned alone. But with a little patience and ingenuity, you can make things that seem difficult become more straightforward. So here it is sort of finished but not really there's a lot to do still there's the top part it's going to be sort of decorative but also help with the support of the whole structure now this part here i was thinking of putting two layers for the raised bed part but i don't think it's necessary i have good enough top soil so i won't need to raise it too much and one will be enough i'll show you when it's done the day is almost it's getting close to the end of the day and i want to finish it before the day is over so I'll show you when it's finished. I like where this design was going. It was still in its skeletal forms, but most importantly, I had managed to get the posts in the right place, keeping the structure relatively square and plumb. Just don't hold me on that. Next came the other crucial element, the roof-like structure. I certainly wanted to add elegance with the curves, so I came up with this design with a double curve. I needed to cut four rafter pieces like this one. I was still using the cheap fence board as the lumber to cut these out of, templating the other pieces out of my first piece. They were about 4 feet in length, but I had plans for the offcuts, you will see it later on. Using a jigsaw I cut the design out. While I was trying to make this an elegant design, I didn't want it to have too many unnecessary details and added on decoration. Each piece had to serve a purpose, and these roof rafters not only would make the bed look nicer, they would also serve as cross bracing reinforcement to make the structure more sound. And later on they would become scaffolding to allow vining plants to climb, built in plant supports. All I had to do now was to install it on top of the structure. To accomplish that, I cut out notches in the ends and fastened them with little blocks of wood to the corner posts. Although later I found it easier to just use small metal L brackets. For the top finial, I used a piece of scrap 4x4 post I had turned in my mini lathe. This is more complicated. You can buy one made for porches or fence posts from the hardware store, or you can repurpose an old furniture leg. You don't have to add the finial, but it does make it look much nicer. I ended up putting two layers of boards in the bottom to make the bed deeper. I attached the offcut fence pieces to the corners and center to add detail and also structural stability. I was really happy with the results. That's gonna be it for today, at least in terms of construction. I, for a while I thought I wasn't gonna be able to do as much as I did, but thankfully I got the structure done. Haven't gotten the panels done, but that's for another day. Each day has its own trouble. Take one day at a time and you too can find your dreams. There is no need for us to live drab, ugly, modern lives. With a bit of creativity, we can spice up our built environment without breaking the bank. If we stop to observe nature's design, we can learn a lot. Nature knows how to create harmonious lines, shapes, and proportions. It knows how to add decoration while keeping true to purpose. Even in its bare bones skeletal stage of winter, there is still a lot of beauty to be found out there. We just have to stop and look and study it. I'm not going to lie, there are people who have a special gift to make things beautiful and creative, but creativity can be exercised, it can be improved. The most important thing is having a willingness to learn. Steadfast spirit to try again and again without the fear of getting things wrong, as well as humility for introspection and critical thought. Coming up in the next block, I start filling up and planting this bed, right after this commercial.
When daffodils start blooming, you know it's the right time to start sowing spring greens. These daffodils were not planted by me. They happen to be holdouts of long forgotten gardens that decal this hundred year old home throughout the decades. They are a sign of a new beginning as they herald the start of spring planting season. But before I can start planting greens like arugula and kale, I need to first fill out my newly constructed raised bed with soil. This would take a bit of manual labor to accomplish, but I was confident it would be worth the effort in the end. Now that the structure is done, I want to plant something in here, but I'll need a little bit more soil here to fill up the level. Since I did decide to make the bed taller here, I'll need more soil. That won't be a problem though, because I'm thinking of redistributing the soil in this area here. I do want to make it so that when it rains, the water doesn't go flush against the foundation of the house. It's never a good thing. So I'll need to create sort of a, a channel in the middle. So all that soil that's going to be in the middle, where I also plan to put a path, that's going to come into the beds because it's actually really good soil and it would be a shame to bury it under a path. It'll serve double duty. I'll, I'll be digging to get the soil and also to create a channel to resolve issues of water running up into the foundation. Soil is made up of several layers. Each has a function and value. The deepest layer is the bedrock, also known as the parent material. Generally, you will never access that layer in your garden nor do you want to. After that is the regolith layer or the substratum. It is made up of the broken up bedrock and it is also usually deep in the earth. On top of that comes the subsoil and the alluvium layer. They usually contain more clay and silt and can be very rich in minerals but low in organic matter. While some plants can access this layer to mine for minerals with their tap roots, Usually it is the next layer you should be focusing on as a gardener. That is the topsoil layer. It is darker than the subsoil layer because it is rich with organic matter. Topsoil depth varies a lot depending on the location. If you are filling up a raised bed, never fill it with the clay-like subsoil. It's not going to help you at all. Only topsoil should be used because that is where most roots grow in and get their nutrients from and where soil microorganisms live. I'm really glad to find this beautiful, friable ground here. Not only do I have awesome ground, I have some amazing earthworms here. Look at this. That's amazing. It already comes with the biology, not only the mineral structure. Now, what I'm doing here is a bit of an extreme action considering soil life in the soil food web. Generally, you don't want to transport soil like this, or at least not do it often. While I was being careful only to transport the topsoil layer, not mixing it with the subsoil, I was still scrambling all the topsoil layers together, disrupting soil life in the process. Certain microorganisms live in certain depths, and by mixing everything up, I was burying some life forms that only live in the topmost part of the topsoil and exposing to sunlight other life forms that live deep down. What I was doing here was comparable to tilling. Exposing the soil to air when you till increases the rate of decomposition of organic matter. This increases the bacterial population and the available nitrogen to plants at the expense of soil fungi. It does give you a short-term boost in fertility, which explains why tilling has been employed traditionally but can cause your soil to lose it in the long run, especially becoming prone to erosion. You want to increase organic matter, not decrease it, for your soil to become more fertile in time. After filling my raised bed, I would never till it again, only adding as much organic matter as possible from now on through mulching. Now that I have the soil pretty much level and full, it's time to plant. I'll be direct seeding, mainly because I don't have time to do all of the plate germination method with the cup. We already are a little bit late in the season, especially because I'm gonna be growing some 
cold weather crops like collards and Swiss chard and kale. So I'll just direct sow them and that's it. Follow me in my next episodes to see how this bed turned out. See you there.